Nowadays, you can get virtually anything you could ever dream of through a subscription service. There are subscription services for food, for tea and coffee, for razors, for hot sauces, for of course, TVs and movies. But did you know that there's also services for vehicles as well? And so that is exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down what these vehicle subscription services are, what exactly they entail and include, and of course, and most importantly, I'm gonna be breaking down what this means for Turo and whether or not these could have an impact on Turo and the peer-to-peer -peer car sharing economy. So let's get started. Now, over the years, we've talked a lot about the different companies that are competitors to Turo. We've talked about the direct competitors, so companies like Get Around or Hire Car. We've talked about rental car competitors, so rental car agencies like Hertz, Avis, or Enterprise. And we've even talked about some of the indirect competitors like Uber and Lyft. But the one type of rental car and Turo competitor that we've never spoken about on this channel is vehicle subscription services. And believe it or not, these types of services are actually growing in popularity. Now, a monthly vehicle subscription service is quite honestly exactly what it sounds like. It is a subscription service that you sign up for and you either commit to like a month by month or a quarterly or a yearly basis. And as a result, you get access to a vehicle and in exchange, you have to pay a monthly fee. And the thing is, whenever it comes to these vehicle subscriptions, there are actually a ton of different options that you can choose from, from a wide variety of different vehicle manufacturers, platforms, and services providers. For example, Porsche has a subscription service that they offer. It's called Porsche Drive and it costs anywhere from $1,600 per month for a Macan up to $2,950 for a Porsche 911. This allows for 1,500 miles per month and you can sign up on a month by month basis. Under this Porsche Drive subscription service, you can also sign up for their multi-vehicle subscription. This costs $3,100 and it allows for you to have access to a fleet of vehicles. With this $3,100 per month subscription, you can have access to all of these cars whenever you would like. But Porsche isn't where it ends. Hertz also offers a vehicle subscription service and the cost of their service depends on the type of car you choose. For a more lower end entry model vehicle, they cost about $599 per month and for a more higher end model, it costs $1,399 per month. There's also third party platforms that offer vehicle subscriptions as well. For example, a company called Baro, which specializes in electric vehicles, offers a wide variety of cars and a wide variety of prices depending on the cars that you wanna buy. A Kia Soul costs $499 per month and a BMW i3 costs $619 per month, which I felt like was pretty reasonable. But now begs the question of, are these vehicle subscription services, are they competition to Turo? And more importantly, are they a threat to the Turo platform? And to be honest, I think that the question is yes. Well, sort of. The reality is any transportation solution is going to be a competitor to Turo. If a company or a product offers a solution for somebody to get from point A to point B, for somebody to run errands, for somebody to go on vacation, then that solution is going to be in some way, shape or form a direct competitor to your Turo fleet and the Turo platform as a whole. But the thing is not all competitors are created equal because different competitors fill different needs. And when it comes to how these subscription services affect Turo hosts, I think a big factor is going to be what type of Turo host you are and how these subscription services directly impact your business specifically. Because the reality is not all Turo hosts are created equal and not all Turo hosts have the same competitors. When we look at these vehicle subscription services, I personally believe that there are two main types of customers that use these subscription services. The first type of customer is the customer that wants flexibility. This is the person that wants to be able to have a variety of different cars at their disposal for a variety of different uses. Maybe they want an SUV for their kids or for their pets. Maybe they want a sports car for the weekends or for those days that they're wanting to impress others. Maybe they just want a variety of different cars at their disposal for the sake of keeping things exciting. Whatever the case is, this customer wants variety. They want flexibility flexibility and the reality is cost is not an issue because let's face it if somebody's paying $3,100 per month for a vehicle subscription service they probably have money. Option number two is the type of person who acknowledges that they need a car every once in a while but they don't need one enough in order to have to justify the purchase of a vehicle and thus the headache that comes along with owning a car. Maybe there's somebody that lives in a city and they walk most of the places that they go so they can't justify dealing with the maintenance, the upkeep, the parking, the vandalism that comes 
comes along with owning a car. So instead they've opted to just go with a subscription service where they don't have to worry about any of that stuff, but they still have a car whenever they need one. Now the thing is, I'm sure there are other types of users that use subscription services like the ones mentioned throughout this video. But in doing research for this video, I found probably a dozen, if not two dozen different platforms that offer these services. And all of them were marketed towards these two profile users, the type of person who prioritizes flexibility and the type of person that prioritizes convenience. And though these types of user profiles definitely make up a portion of Turo renters, they certainly don't make up the majority. Whenever you look at the people who are using Turo from a consumer standpoint, you're looking at people that are going on vacation, who are out of town for business, who are wanting to use a car for a couple of days while their car is in the shop, who are wanting to rent a car to just try something for the night. You're not looking for those people that are wanting to find something to drive on a month by month basis. The vast majority of Turo rentals are short term. And this just simply isn't the customer base that these subscription models are going after. Another thing that I notice is the different types of cars that these subscription services offer versus the different types of cars that Turo offers. Turo has an impressively large selection of vehicles, and this is due to the fact that it's peer to peer. So there are people that are supplying these cars and thus Turo doesn't have to worry about stocking any sort of inventory. This is a huge advantage from these subscription services because of the fact that with Turo, you could very literally rent a 2007 Focus one night, a 2015 Range Rover the next, and a 2020 Lamborghini Huracan the next day. You could rent a variety of different cars back to back to back from each other simply because of the fact that there are tons of cars available. But with these subscription services, you not only don't have that same variety, but you don't have really any options for older vehicles at all. So if somebody is looking for a cost effective way to get access to a vehicle, well, you're simply out of luck if you're looking at these subscription services only. I personally think that the fact that these subscription services only use higher end, more expensive vehicles means that they're not going to be going after the vast majority of people that are renting from Turo, which is of course a good thing for us. At the end of the day, we have three questions to answer with this video. Number one is, are these subscription services a competitor to Turo? And the answer is absolutely. Any type of rental solution is going to be a competitor to Turo one way or the other. The second question is, are these subscription services a threat to Turo? And I still think that the answer there is no but I do think it depends on the different types of cars that you're renting out as well as where you're located. And the third question here is, should you be worried about these subscription services? And once again, I think that the answer there is no. I simply believe that these subscription services are targeting a different customer base than the customers that are using Turo. I think that they're in a different tax bracket. I think they're looking for something totally different than what Turo offers. I just think it's a different customer base, though there may be a little bit of crossover. And to be honest, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if Turo started implementing their own subscription model, especially if this entire business model gains traction and becomes becomes more popular. It's something that would be really smart and really easy for them to implement, and I wouldn't be surprised if they started experimenting with it. With that being said, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some valuable insight into some of the different competitors in the car sharing space. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below and while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.